Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilze Nagl and today we will be talking about mandatory military service. It has been abolished 14 years ago in Latvia, but our neighbors still have it. So maybe we should have it, should renew it as well. So today I'm joined by Rasa Yuknavicien. She's an MEP from Lithuania. Uh, from EPP group here in the parliament and you have been the Minister of Defence for four years as well. Yes. And uh, from Estonia I'm joined by Riho Teres, also from EPP group and he has been Estonian uh, commander of Estonian Defence Forces for seven years and in 2017 became a general. Very nice to have you both mm -hmm. here. Um, as I mentioned, Latvia uh, abolished uh, mandatory military service 14 years ago, but is Lithuania has just renewed uh, six years ago. Yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah. I think it was uh, a mistake to abolish or to postpone, as it was in Lithuania then, uh, because uh, we, we need uh, a strategy on our defence uh, related with uh, our reserve forces. We have to have reserve people. They uh, would be ready to join armed forces if it's necessary during mobilization. And we don't need very large armed forces in peacetime. So we have to have such kind of mixed uh, armed forces, professionals and also conscripts. Uh, so this is utmost important. Second is that uh, we have to have our society more prepared or with the, the higher understanding. What does it mean uh, to defend your own country? And the third, last but not least, very important uh, uh, aspect, we, um, uh, after this abolishment or postponement of our uh, conscript armed forces, we faced huge crisis on our private le level in professionals, with professionals. Because uh, with the conscript armed forces, young people are coming, they are looking how it works, and many of them, they would like to, uh, to be part of professional army afterwards. So uh, these three very important uh, um, aspects were important to be back, but of course the main was that we did that just after Crimean annexation and uh, Russian attacks against uh, Ukraine. Then it was easier to convince our political uh, groups, different political groups, to be back on that. Estonia never abolished a mandatory military service, but I have read that you are now planning to increase number of young people who serve in, in this conscription forces? Well, yes, uh, I think for a small country like Estonia with one million people, uh, professional service would not uh, uh, give us the possible, uh, the needed force. I mean, uh, we, have, uh, have, we have recruited for a professional uh, battalion for years and years and then there's still 700 people and that's not enough. That is one of the reasons. For us, the second reason is that the public support to and I would not call it mandatory service, I would call it national service, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, has the word nation in it, uh, is supported by 90% of people. The only sequence where it is less supported is the young people between 18... But actually, uh, the ones who have to go and do <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. But, they, but, but they go anyway. And it's more popular. I mean, I've, I've seen it from, uh, from uh, 1991, as we uh, started with the uh, national service, uh, to now, until now, uh, the... Uh, the number of people who volunteer is increasing every year. Right now we have more than 50% of the people who come to the mandatory service, they volunteer, then they can choose where they go. Uh, and that's it's very popular. And uh, our companies uh, also uh, take uh, better people who have already served. And we have it now for the, for the ladies as well. So we have no restrictions for a female to, to join the uh, service. They are not mandatory, but, but they, uh, they can do as well. Uh, I think the biggest the point is here uh, that, um, that if you want to have uh, two or two percent or more allocated for defense, uh, then you need to have a public support. And the public support comes through the mandatory service or national service. Actually, mandatory service, you think, increases public support Absolutely. for the army? Because your, your father and mother send the son to the, uh, to the service. If the, if the officers are well educated and trained, if uh, the uh, accommodations are perfect for a modern world, if the food is good, and if the young man 
come, coming back for the service, say, well, it was great. I had a very mm. new and interesting experience. That's what, is, what happens right now. So the uh, parents say, okay, if, if that is the case, I would go and vote for the party who says 2% or more. And, and that happened. I mean, uh, in, uh, I remember after the, I was uh, permanent secretary in the ministry as we had the crisis 2009. And where Latvia and Lithuania, they uh, 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 cut the defense spendings almost half. Mm -hmm. uh, in Estonia, it was not possible because the public support was uh, 90% to the 2% and to the uh, mandatory service. If you would have cut it, people would have gone mad. So, uh, and we didn't cut uh, the defense spendings that time almost at all. Do you also feel, find that in Lithuania, that the public support, that mothers and, and fathers mm. are willing to send their sons mm. to the mandatory military service? Because back in the Soviet times, mm. it was a big, mm. like, you know, people were trying to find ways mm. how to avoid that. It is totally different armed forces. And now everybody knows that we have no such, uh, such um, how to say, uh, events like Dead of China was in, in Soviet armed forces. No and Dead of China in no Lithuanian No Dead of Army? China. Maybe some cases, you know, when young uh, guys are some discussions among themselves, but that's it. And it depends very much on, on the officer, on the level of professionals they are taking care of, uh, of conscripts, of course. And of course, we have a little bit uh, um, advances. I mean, uh, some payments after service. It's also important for, for young, uh, young people. Mm. They receive some money during if they the if they, service. The, if they are uh, excellent, good, uh, I mean, during the service, nine months service, so they can get uh, at about 3,000 uh, euros afterwards. And also it is a deal with... Uh, uh, with the um, employees, employers, so they uh, before and after service. If you were an employee before service, so employer can get uh, some subsidies for for that. But in the future, I think it's my personal uh, opinion. We have to go forward and look to Estonia and uh, Finland uh, with the more widening our. Um, conscript um, invitations for the conscripts just after the gymnasiums or uh, secondary school uh, it would be much better in the future now we have we are taking not everyone only those they we need we we, we need about 4,000 every every year so the so person can choose a person, either to person go or is not on to go. the list so usually it's a priority for those who are coming voluntarily and sometimes one year it was enough of those they came voluntarily so those on the list they were even not invited or maybe from that same list they they came voluntarily then they can choose the uh, place where they will serve and so on and so on but i think that it's only it was first step Maybe in the few, and people, your, your question was about the mothers and fathers. So today, more and more uh, is uh, ac accepted by, by our society. Maybe in the very beginning, it was a little bit shocking news for, for some people, but now it's less and less. Um, Latvian army commander Leonid Kalnish uh, once said that uh, he's against uh, mandatory military service because he says that it might help Russia, meaning that uh, we will have a sort of train basic level soldiers, but uh, right now we need more professionals. The, the, the professional skills that are needed in army uh, are much higher that you cannot teach people in, in nine months. So what do you say to that? Well, I will not comment on Leonis, but I, I say that uh, it's not about uh, the national service. Uh, it's not about these nine months. It's about what happens after. Mm. And our armed forces are, are based on, on a regular training after the conscription. Uh, which means that we have uh, no notice exercises where in, inside of the 24 to 48 hours we, ca we are able to put together uh, a size of army of 25,000 uh, and that would not help the Russians. And, and the second thing is, uh, what is more, even more important is that uh, the people are from the universities. From the, we, we have MA uh, soldiers who have a magister degree or a bachelor degrees on uh, IT, on information technology, and we are using them. We have their so-called cyber service, we, where we pick up the best uh, cyber specialists and they do their job, and not only during the mandatory service, but in the reserve, 
up to 30 years uh, age, uh, they, they run exercises. And I have run exercise of, of uh, 20,000 people uh, as I, uh, in my last year, uh, 2018. So uh, a big uh, portion of, of that is everybody who is male and <laughs> who is healthy is a soldier. Uh, and I think that will not help the Russians too much. But let mm. me be devil's advocate. Yes, uh, you can. When uh, out of 27 EU countries, only eight have mandatory conscription service and uh, 19 do not have. Mostly mm. those who don't have mandatory military service are Western European countries. Mm. Aren't we kind of very East European about it mm -hmm. with this uh, mandatory military service? I'd rather think that, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Swiss have reintroduced the mandatory service, which they abolished in between. The Finns are not that much of an <laughs> Eastern European country. Uh, and I think it's about uh, our, our size of the countries and our, uh, our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have a direct control, but if, I mean, if you have 80 million people, you will always be able to have an army uh, on the size of even million if you want. Uh, One million people, it would, would, mm. would be difficult to have a real, regular, professional army. It's just not possible. Mm. But do you think maybe Latvia should have a mandatory military service as well? Mm. If I would be Latvian, of course, I would uh, argue for that. And I think it's, it's very important for countries like, like our countries. So your question about Western or Eastern Europe and somebody, some countries have, some countries not. Yep. Uh, but look to uh, all our regional countries. Uh, Sweden is back with conscripts. Nor Norwe Norwegians, despite that they are not members of um, EU, but they are members of NATO and have almost the same geopolitical situation. They are back even with the women. Uh, uh, in, in, in armed forces uh, together with, the, with, the, with males, with men. And uh, so I already mentioned Finland is the best example in our region. Uh, and size, of course, size of the country and, uh, and geopolitical situation. Uh, and this is your question about uh, is, it, is it possible to have ready to uh, persons after nine months. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's combination of those professionals and those they got this uh, education, short ed education, but got this education and they are uh, leaving um, uh, conscript uh, period with some specialization, with some profession, military profession. And the uh, future is not that they are leaving and that's it. In five years, they are back. Uh, all of them, almost all of them, are back in Lithuania uh, for two, three weeks uh, course, how to say, to, to look for the news in armed forces. And all of them, they having this specialization, they know where they will serve if they will be uh, invited. So this is, this is, this is a combination of professionals, uh, uh, conscripts, and this is one unit. But also, uh, many of them, after this um, uh, nine months, they can choose, for example, voluntary forces. They can have combination with their um, civilian jobs, and uh, monthly they have uh, exercises together with the uh, people in, in voluntary forces. Or, for, for example, they can join riflemen organizations, some non-governmental organization related also with, with defense. So, so there is complex of, of, of our issues. Thank you so much for this discussion and mandatory military service. Will Latvia choose it as well? Or maybe we think that our Zemsardze or National Guard is strong enough and we don't need to choose the same options as, as our neighbors, neighbors have chosen. But that's for us to decide and discuss. Thank you.